that on web of trust. I think for the last three years. And I'm a member of the board of trustees. While they sort out the technology, I could uh, be exchanging a few remarks. Eco Trust was established in uh, 1999 um, as a transformation of a uh, branding project <laughs> then established under USAID called the GMU or Grants Management Unit, which uh, we managed to transform into an institution that we see today. It continues to be Uganda's only indigenous not for profit organization that has specialized in conservation finance. Uh, indeed, as I said, initial funding came from USAID. And uh, since its inception and uh, creation, we have developed and tested various homegrown models for resource mobilization. Um, when I became treasurer, I had had an experience with the Mugahimba Bindi Trust, which started up there, and then later on uh, started going down, and myself and the chairman we are tasked and uh, contracted to do a sustainability plan for the Hinga Baby Trust, which we did. And uh, it came, it again started going up. So similarly, we were worried about sustainability when we became members of the Board of Trustees. And we continuously asked the Secretariat to think seriously about sustainability and not only simple sustainability, but sustainability at the highest levels possible. Uh, currently, I think the turnover from trees for global what? TGP. The turnover has been 850 thousand USA dollars and this is a private sector aid for indirect investment in small holdings through agroforestry systems and we have calculated our capital income generated under TGB is $985 dollars so as part of the sustainability path we thought of uh, an endowment fund. Instead of depending just on projects supported by various donors, projects come, projects end, we thought we could find a mechanism where we can really anchor the organization along a sustainability path. And we thought an endowment fund would be one of those mechanisms that can help us. It's a financial cushion. We think it will be a financial cushion. And I remember staff and honorable prime minister, should I say? The cushion the organization by providing stability through changing times, as you know, today, how many dollars, tomorrow, dollars. Are not there, but also ensuring institutional sustainability and enhance ability to achieve conservation goals. When we came in as a new board, we sought to ensure that Eco Trust should be here forever. And that is what we have been doing, and that has been our management style to ensure that Eco Trust should be. A Ugandan project that should be a permanent project that should be here forever. We think also an endowment fund will 
arm us with the ability to engage various stakeholders and partners. Because we are looking at everybody from the banks, donors, to private donors, to public donors, all. Now, if you have such a wide spectrum of stakeholders, you need to have a mechanism that can accommodate each one and each one's interest. Because the way you might manage financing from a donor, a public donor, is not probably the way you manage financing from a bank. So we thought an endowment fund within which we can bring first various interests would be the kind of financing mechanism that can accommodate each and every one of our stakeholders. But also, we think an endowment fund will give us a greater degree of independence and flexibility. And also, it will give us greater bargaining power because we shall be creating our own working capital. And um, we shall be also having a flexible mechanism that can meet the variegated interests of our stakeholders. I think the community has failed us, but uh, that is the flexibility we are looking for, that we can have a true endowment fund, have a quasi-endowment fund, that could be both either Either be board directed or donor directed, and that's the kind of mechanism we are trying to create. And today we have two quasi funds we have the Carbon Bank and the Press Facility. Uh, this one has been facilitated by UNDP and the Federal Office and the United Nations Office. And indeed, we've started purchasing environmental services for. Farmers. We are using the market to recoup investment, recapitalize and expand participation. And we have an inbuilt risk insurance policy to guard against non delivery and market failure. We are also thinking of building a business case for post creation of uh, an in country market. E.g. working with the electric companies, that's the water companies, the hydroelectricity companies, and so on and so forth. Only in Mera, you should explain this one better. Only. She's up. Um, 2015, we are looking at the total budget that's in the millions of dollars. There are figures that are missing down here. And the table shows how we want to grow our endowment and how we want to engage with you. All in. Basically, what we are looking at is by 2020, we would like to have a, a principle of at least 10 million US dollars. And how we have arrived at this principle is we have looked at our desired uh, uh, budget, annual budget. Um, uh, so, so in 2015, we are looking at a budget of 1.8 million US dollars. But beginning next year up to 2020, we would like to be operating that uh, an annual budget of 2.1 million US dollars. And uh, we would like to start, say, this year by having a principal somewhere which we have already, uh, where we would have a 3%, we, we are having an assumption that we'll have a 3% return on investment. Next year, a 4% return on investment. But by 2020, we will have uh, learned through the process and able to achieve at least an 8% return on investment. So for that to happen, we are also having uh, conservative investments on how much we would like the endowment fund to be contributing to our annual budget. And by we, this year and next year, we don't expect to, to generate any resources to contribute to our budget. We will plan to reinvest all the interest that comes from the uh, endowment 
fund back into growing the principle. So we are thinking that beginning 2017, we will have the endowment fund, the interest from the endowment fund, contributing to 10% of our annual budget. So by 20, our target is that by 2020, we will have the income that comes from investing the principal, contributing to at least 40% of, of our annual operations. And when we have worked it out, that means that our target by 2020, we would like to have a principal of uh, 10, 10, 10 million US dollars, which if invested at um, a return of investment on 8% should be able to cover at least 40% of the plans that we have. Thank you. Thank you, you've heard. And uh, I want to assure you that uh, the, the, the current, that we write this, the current board uh, is the type of board that is uh, to, that all other boards should emulate. The current board thinks they came in with skills and they, they experienced to contribute and not take anything out. Our first action was to actually cut the, seat, the seating allowance. We cut it from what it was to something very small, just to facilitate our contribution to the growing this institution. But also we have given plenty of lead room to the Secretariat. We have a small team of ladies and gentlemen at the Secretariat who have given enough lead room for innovation and they are working so hard Mr. Minister. And I want to commend the Secretariat and the current board to you partners that engage with us and we shall realize this model. Thank you very much. And I now take this